What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. On this episode, we're doing our final assembly of the chassis. We have the Eastwood paint on the F100. Eastwood has this really nice rust encapsulator matte black finish. As you can see on video, it looks like it's powder coated. It's got a really nice sheen all the way through. We finally got our parts back from powder coat. Rear end's got a nice gloss to it. Everything's nice and tidy on the rear end, so it's ready to go underneath the back of the truck. And all our control arms and everything are good to go. We went with a triple bronze on these control arms to match the wheels that are gonna be going on the truck so everything kind of jive together. A wheel with brakes, everything's all nice and shined up. These ball joints are gonna go back inside because when you go to powder coat these parts, you gotta strip everything down. So now we get to put everything back together. So this is like the fun icing on the cake. You know, all this build process, everything we've done, all the fabrication work to the chassis, getting everything all lined up. We did the motor mounts, got all these all reinforced, all nice fresh paint on everything. So when the bronze control arms and the polished coilovers go on against that black, it's gonna really pop really nice. So enough talking, let's get to work and start putting the icing on this cake. So we got our ball joints here. They actually thread into the end of these control arms. You want to run a tap through freshly powder coated parts so that you're not going to cross thread it and run into any issues. And then we have these bushings here. They're actually going to get pressed into the ends of the lower points and this is where a bolt's going to go through. You never on a suspension system want metal to metal. There's always got to be some sort of bushing. So all our ball joints are installed and our bushings are installed. So these are the lower control arms. This is the, the longer of the two. The upper control arms is where all your adjustments gonna be for caster and camber. These heim joints right here, you can thread them in and out so that it'll allow the angle of the wheel to actually move forward and backwards inside the wheel well. Got the lower control arm on. When you're doing this dual control arm setup, when you want to bolt it together, what I like to do first is hang the coilover. Do your lower control arm. You attach that point to the coilover. So this assembly is now gonna be fixed. And then it makes it pretty simple to put your spindle and your upper control arm on to continue on in the process. When you start from the bottom and work your way to the top, Makes it a lot easier to an angle with this stuff, especially if you're doing it by yourself in your garage. So the only thing left to do is just put the upper control arm on. It's gonna go between these two points right here. Be a little bit tight, but we'll slide it in there. So what I like to do is just get this upper ball joint kind of lined up, and then we're just slipping this in there like that. And we have our bolt. And that's it. Upper lower control arm, coil over, and spindle are installed. So we're gonna make our way over to the driver's side, get that all set up. Next up, we're gonna put the steering rack in. It bolts to these two points right here. And then of course your, your uh, rod ends are gonna bolt right here in your spindle so that you can steer the truck. The F100 originally came with like cantilever set up. So we had an arm coming from this frame rail coming over to this wheel and an arm coming from this frame rail going down to that wheel and it scissored like that. And what happened was it binds up the front suspension. So with this setup, it's actually got a rack and pinion from a Mustang, dual upper and lower A arms, which creates like a really nice travel for the suspension. And the coilover setup is now positioned at the chassis and at the furthest point right near the wheel. So the advantage of this setup is worlds better compared to what they had back in the 70s. And this setup is gonna form better, it's gonna corner better. It's also gonna transition to braking better because suspension actually has a lot to do with your braking setup. So front end's pretty much where we want it right now. We're gonna run to the rear and do our four link. Yeah, let's go. So this is our four link setup. These bars are stinking beefy and they're gonna be able to handle any kind of power we can throw at it. These polyurethane bushings are gonna have a lot less give. They're gonna be really, really nice as far as transferring the power from the chassis of the truck down to the ground. So we're gonna run also coilover setup two in the rear, just like the front. So we have to reassemble these arms, throw back in the chassis, and then throw the rear end back in there. Four 
link is in, we have everything just kind of mocked up for now. Andrew's putting in that brace that actually kind of adds more strength. So this bracket, this massive bracket that holds the four link is braced from the front of the lower of the four, of the two to the front of the chassis. Just adds extra strength there and it allows you just to beat the living daylights out of this thing without actually ever worrying about it. What we're doing is setting the uh, center line for the rear axle, getting it squared inside the chassis while also setting our pinion angle. It's gonna dictate the angle of our drive shaft to the transmission. Um, you don't wanna have your drive shaft at too severe of an angle to cause any kind of binding or yeah. vibration, but we're gonna try to get it with as much of a straight shot from the differential to the yoke on the transmission. Down yonder. Uh, the weight is gonna dictate a lot too on the ride height and obviously where the differential sits in the chassis. So this is just kind of getting you started and then once we get everything back together, we'll be able to fine tune a little better. Oh no, there's an opening back here. I know. <laughs> you put your hand there and you just put your nut on it. It's easy, dude. You're <laughs> funny. All right guys, suspension is on. Everything's looking really good. Now we're gonna go ahead and put the Willwood brake system on. We got four piston calipers up front and four piston in the rear. The front's a little larger, so it's good for braking, but this system from Willwood's really comprehensive. It bolts right onto the F100, so it's gonna work like factory. trying to get everything ironed out as far as the hard lines go on the chassis. So we're going to make one hard line going straight from the master cylinder in the engine bay all the way back to the rear axle. And then we're gonna make two hard lines at the front under the engine on the cross member to power the two front brakes individually out of the Willwood Master. And what I like to use is welding wire. So if, instead of wasting your brake line and trying to bend it in place, I suggest getting yourself a pair of side cutters like these. Cut your welding wire to length wherever you want it, and then go ahead and fit it up in the truck. This welding wire is silicon bronze, so it's really easy and flexible. You can bend it any way you want. I already put a little 90 in there. So what I'm gonna try to do is come right out of this fitting here, dive back to this uh, axle tube, run right down to where that bracket is to hold the, the line, and I'm gonna try to jog it around here as tight as I can around the back of the pumpkin, and then make our way over and put our T fitting about right here. So our brake line mock-up tool, AKA filler wire for a welder, is all kind of set where I want it. And this is gonna give me a template when I go to bend the actual line. So we have our brake line bent up. Our test piece here kind of worked as a good guide for us to bend up the line. As you can see, it's Gets us around the rear of the pumpkin, but what we have to do now is we have to put a fitting on the end of this. So this is a sleeve that's gonna fit like this. Uh -huh. You're gonna flare the end. Uh -huh. This sleeve is gonna push on as you tighten down this nut. He <laughs> said nut. And this push presser on your taper, and it makes a leak-free connection. All right guys, so hard lines are done on the rear end and as you can see, we tried our best to go from the caliper and just kind of hug the profile of this rear end. And these old tabs actually served as a, a repurposing tool to be able to hold these hard lines down. The T fitting, like we said guys, is just laid out here. You don't really want to put it on the top of the pumpkin right here because then it can have like a bind in the back of the bed because it's going to be about like this high. So you want to tee it off on either side of the pumpkin. In this case, we decided to go on the driver's side. We ran our hard lines for the brakes. We're gonna go ahead and lower the cab down and get the truck into the clean room and get ready to start wiring and go into the interior.
Now that we're in the clean room here at S2SB shop, we got our rear end, all of our suspension parts back on the truck. Brake kit, headers are in, coyote swaps complete. Tune in next time to see what's going in this big open spot on the motor. Just a little sneak peek if you want. Woo doggy. We'll see you soon, get to work. Thank <laughs> you.